Hello, friends, and welcome to the Architecture Enthusiast and to Totlin's Tower, an influential design for early modern architectural movements. In order to solidify his rule, Vladimir Lenin ordered the production of futuristic monuments that could help Russia redefine its national identity. The architect Vladimir Tatlin came up with a design for a 400 meter tall tower that would have housed key government branches and other organizations. If built, the tower would have qualified as a modern world wonder. Unfortunately, an overambitious design prevented it from ever coming into existence. In 1920, the Russian architect Vladimir Totlin proudly unveiled the very first wooden model for the monument to the Third International. The building, which would function as a new and improved headquarters of the Comintern, was planned to be built in the city of Petrograd, today's St. Petersburg. Communist Party officials who came to review it offered mixed opinions. Totlin's vision for the monument was unlike anything the world had ever seen. With a planned height of 400 meters, the building had the shape of two intertwining helixes. These helixes cradled four distinct suspended structures. The spaces inside had unique purposes and were given different shapes. The first space, a cube located near to the base of the structure, would have been reserved for lectures, conferences, and legislatures. Located above the cube was a pyramid that could be used for executive party meetings. Above the pyramid was a cylinder that would have housed an information center that broadcasted news, declarations, and manifestos. If completed, Totland's Tower would have been both a testament to and an expression of early Soviet ideology. The building, constructivist in its design, would have been made entirely from locally sourced materials. Where government buildings in capitalist countries were typically adorned with marble, ivory, and other expensive materials, Totland wanted his tower to be made using materials that were staples of Soviet industry and as such had special significance to the working class. These included iron, steel, and glass. Totland's tower was designed during a time when communist rule was still nascent and party leaders sought to establish a new and a distinctly socialist identity through art. Totland's tower was unique precisely because it was non-representational. Rather than depicting a single individual, the construction addressed an entire socio-economic class of people. Despite minor criticisms, Totland's plans for the monument were received enthusiastically by party officials. However, as plans for its construction began to take shape, the Bolsheviks quickly realized the project was more than a little overambitious. So overambitious, in fact, that it would have never been completed. In her book, The Russian Experiment in Art, the art historian Camilla Gray stated that post-revolutionary Russia would go bankrupt if it tried to acquire the insane amounts of steel, iron needed for the tower's skeletal framework. That's not even talking about the feats of engineering that Totlin had incorporated in his design. Remember how the tower was actually made up of four separate structures suspended in the double helixes? Well, in Totlin's original design, each of these would have rotated on their axes, completing a full revolution in accordance with the importance of the institutions conducting their business on the inside. The cube that contains the legislator would have been completed a full rotation once per year. The pyramid above housing the offices of party executives would have needed a month. The information center located at the very peak would have rotated once a day, offering a 360 degree view of Petrograd. Although Thailand's tower never came to fruition, it still made the strong impression its creator had desired. His design is considered a staple of Russian constructivism, inspiring not only Russian designers, 
but a whole host of modern architectural movements as well. The building shape has become instantly recognizable, even to people who know next to nothing about Soviet history. This is perhaps thanks to contemporary artists who have incorporated its image into their own work. Ai Weiwei's statue, the fountain of light on display at the Louvre in Abu Dhabi, is essentially a carbon copy of Totland's tower, albeit repurposed as a chandelier. Ironically, one discipline the tower didn't much influence was Soviet art. After plans for its construction got scrapped, party officials decided to go into a new direction with their country's cultural institutions, where pioneers of abstract music, painting, literature, and architecture had initially fought alongside the Bolsheviks in their campaign to build a new world, they soon would be persecuted by the secret police of Joseph Stalin.